Good morning, everybody. Uh, first of all, my apologies. I shall spare you my poor German, uh, even if it would probably be good for me to practice it. Uh, but I have looked very much forward to joining you this morning and speak on behalf of the European Commission at our event today. Um, let me pull completely away from the very narrow subject that you will be discussing later this morning and uh, start from the perspective much, much wider that uh, uh, we are in Europe at a crossroads about identity and about culture, who we are, and how we uh, live with other people. Uh, you surely know that Europe is amazingly challenged by so many events in Europe and around in the world. And it brings to the fore an issue of cultural heritage and cultural identity. And um, I'm beginning at that corner because I'm Danish. And the most famous <coughs> Dane presumed all over the world wandered on the ramparts of the castle of Kronborg a few hundred years ago, asking the existentialist question to be or not to be. And uh, it is a question of who we are as Europeans and why culture is so important, not as such in a technical sense for the European Union, but for us as Europeans, who are we and how do we live together in an increasingly multicultural, multi-religious world in an open world where we are exposed to, to all kinds of impulses and how we react to them. Uh, I say this because it comes from the perspective that I, I travel a lot in Europe. Are we afraid? Do we, uh, when we meet things we do not understand or do not see or do not identify with, we try to turn away from it? Or do we embrace it as part of our society and in a way part of our future? Let's face it, and I say this here in this grand library and in this nation who has received more non-Germans in a year than any other country in our European history ever. Last year with the migrant and refugee crisis, we need to understand that our Europe has, is changing. It is changing because we have uh, so many reasons why we are subject to impulses from all over the world. And we can see that as a fascinating future that we embrace and wish to use and turn into a richness for ourselves and uh, as an ambition of uh, cultural coexistence and uh, inspirations, or we can try to turn away from it and be afraid and be inwards looking and defensive. So I think a culture and cultural heritage, which this institution and the many of you uh, represent here, is at the very heart of the discussion about Europe and the future of Europe. I represent the Commission. Of course, I have these grand programs that I could speak to you about for hours, such as Erasmus Plus or the Creative Europe program, and I'm proud of them. They are some of the crown jewels of the European Union. We help millions of young people travel and study in other countries and learn. And the funny thing is, you see, and um, that when somebody travels under, for instance, the Erasmus Plus, it's not so much that they study archaeology or history or literature or law or mathematics. It's not that different when you go from Stockholm to Bologna. Of course, ultimately, a lot of the substance is the same. What we do know now, and we know that because we've had more than 9 million young Europeans on these scholarships, is what it does to the individual young person, the shaping of that person, the ability of that person to rely on him or herself, to be open-minded, to, to understand uh, other ways of doing things, and when they come back, we can singularly prove that in so many ways they have been shaped by this experience more than just what they were taught and have therefore seen an opportunity that will help them go forward in life, both professionally as a person. Now, uh, this is just to pull you a little bit out of the very narrow. I'm very pleased to be here because I would like to explore with you the perspectives and opportunities for cultural heritage in today's digital world. It is inspiring to be surrounded by so much knowledge and culture built through the centuries uh, of intellectual debate and cultural exchanges. It reminds me and it reminds all of us, I believe, in this hall that Europe is one of the cradles 
of philosophy, literature, music, and arts. And it is the cradle that has shaped us as Europeans the most. But we are also, of course, surrounded by stories of wars and tragedies. So much of what we hear today about Europe in the public debates is as much about divisions and differences. Yet Europe today is much more, I believe. It is first and foremost about living together and coexisting, but more than just living as neighbors, but engaging and exploring the possibilities that this multicultural world we are living in and which we will live in for the rest of our lives offers us. So our shared cultural heritage is a testimony to that. And I would like us to celebrate the European cultural heritage, all of us, by signing up to work hard for the 2018 European Year of Cultural Heritage. It will be an opportunity to rediscover our roots and who we are, to remind ourselves that cultural heritage that surrounds us is both at local, national, and European level. It is a sign of the history of peoples, a trace of the many encounters between different civilizations that crossed our continent along trade routes, paths of pilgrimage, or also much earlier, immigration. And I would take this also as an opportunity, and going back to what we experienced last year, and say cultural heritage is also about sharing and wishing to engage with others, and therefore it is also about taking so many of these people who came here and surely are bewildered and amazed at the world they have landed in, whether it is here in Germany, whether it's in Sweden or the Netherlands, and they try to explain to them and show them our cultural heritage so they can better understand where they are right now. So none of us Europeans would be who we are without that history that we share. And this is really at the heart of the European project. It has allowed us to live close to each other and in peace and relative prosperity for 60 years. Germany has been particularly instrumental in building a consensus on the need of having the European Year of Cultural Heritage next year. And I would like to thank the German national and regional authorities and many stakeholders for their strong support for this initiative. But let's also be clear that this is not just a 12-month celebration of European cultural heritage. We need to use it to set roots, to be sure that the debate goes on about who we are, the cultural heritage we share, and where we come from. Knowledge and culture are extraordinary sources. The more you share them, the more they live and grow also in the future. And the German National Library has always been a hub and multiplier of knowledge and culture by opening its doors to students and researchers who have built here the foundation of their future studies and work. And by cooperating and networking, as we just heard, with many other institutions at national as well as an international level. Today's digital tools allow us to increase exponentially these virtuous circles. They offer an, us amazing opportunities to connect cultural institutions to various, to various new audiences that have not always been easily reachable and in ways that were not possible before. The incredible amount of knowledge available now, once reserved for those who lived in or around Frankfurt, for instance, or those who came here to study and, re and research is now at the disposal of huge number of students and researchers from all over the world. Digital tools allow cultural institutions to step outside their walls of safety, work together across institutions and have a broader impact on our society. Our cultural institutions, such as this library, do not exist for its own purpose. It exists to also shape and be part of the society we live in. We don't have today to fly to Dublin, for instance, to see the Book of Celts. And researchers can now study and compare copies of the Gutenberg Bible, which are found now in many parts of the world. And we can access those extraordinary resources without any risk of damage to these unique and irreplaceable books. The digital shift and the rapid development of new technologies present exciting and still untapped opportunities to increase, to broaden, and to diversify cultural heritage audiences 
reaching out to the young, the so-called Generation D. New technologies allow us to experience and participate in culture in ways that would have been unimaginable just a few years ago. Let me just mention that the Berliner Philharmonics now allows us to enjoy great concerts, video streamed in high definition and with excellent sound on a personal television screen, on your mobile device or on your computer. In addition to its existing core audiences that have always been around, this initiative has therefore helped attract millions of new viewers from in and outside Europe and interestingly enough with a much younger age profile than their core audience in Berlin. And many of the greatest opera houses now transmit their performances live to cinemas across the globe. With the Creative Europe funded opera platform we can watch operas from home regardless of whether we are opera lovers or tempted by it for the first time or stumble over it by accident. When accessing websites of the Rijksmuseum, we can explore the collection of works of art and historical objects spanning eight centuries. We can observe the tiniest details from Rembrandt and Vermeer through high resolution images. But it is not enough to make culture available online. It has also to be accessible in a much broader sense. Among the European Commission's priorities agreed with the member states of the European Union in the new work plan for culture, a common reflection is now on the way on how to achieve a more accessible and inclusive culture, taking, for example, into account how digital technologies have changed the way people access, how people produce, and how people use cultural content today. The recently published study engaged audiences by the European Commission, or made for the European Commission, made a number of interesting remarks, and they identified three types of audiences of cultural content. The audiences by habit, the audiences by choice, and the audiences by surprise. The last category refers to the public that is either indifferent to or even hostile towards cultural activities for a variety of reasons. Possibly because some of them may feel socially excluded and cannot see that this has any relevance or offer any pleasure to them. Maybe because they were never even given the opportunities or knowledge to approach culture in the way that many of us in this room would do. Or maybe because they're experiencing barriers to access. Whatever the reason is, the study gives some advice in this regard, coupled with practical examples for cultural operators in Europe that manage to reach out to these more distant audiences. Many factors can play a role here, from the effective space design and renewal of cultural venues to attract diverse ethnic, age, and social groups, to reinforcing links between cultural organizations and education sector to make cultural experiences accessible and integrate arts and culture much more than we see today in primary and secondary schools and education. Digital technologies offer amazing tools and opportunities, but we have also to think how these opportunities can be translated to reach out to audiences that we often do not think of first when you think of cultural content. And this is where cultural institutions such as this one have a role in stepping outside their walls and having a broader impact on the society, not only here in Frankfurt, of course, but as a national library, of course, across this nation, and I would dare to say across Europe. The European Year of Cultural Heritage 2018 will be an opportunity to progress in this direction. <clears throat> I'm convinced that the discussion that is taking place here today will bring valuable contributions to its success. Because by making heritage more people-centered, more inclusive, and when I say inclusive, it is also to reflect on, as I say, how do we reach certain groups in our society for whom this has not ever been a relevant option to engage with cultural institutions such as this library, and also to be more forward-looking, more integrated, and more cross-sectorial. And the European Year of Cultural Heritage will therefore contribute, we hope, to a better appreciation by European citizens in all member states to the value of cultural heritage for our society, and I dare say, for our economy. It should contribute to engage all of Europe's citizens in deeper reflections about the roots and meaning of our shared values and cultural diversity and tolerance in a modern society. 
I said at the beginning, I will say it here in my close, Europe is not about programs. It's not about budget. It's not about institutions. Europe is about values. What binds us together, 28, sorry to say soon 27, is first and foremost a shared cultural heritage and a shared set of values that shape the societies wherever we are in this continent. And therefore, our cultural diversity and the tolerance that it requires and needs to be, but also the desire to engage with and live in a multicultural society is essential as we go forward. And, we, and it offers a huge opportunity for Europe to be a continent of intellect, reflections, and in-depth research and studies. Ladies and gentlemen, I do wish you a very fruitful, interesting, and thought-provoking debate here today. I will be spending the morning with you listening to your discussions and hoping to learn as I also go forward in taking my preparations for the European Year of Cultural Heritage. And I am, I'm seriously looking forward to working with as many of you as possible during the year. As I said, the year is a launch path. It's a starting point, 12 months where we focus on this, but the idea is, of course, that the Year of Cultural Heritage will continue far into the future in the coming years and that we will have a much stronger focus on cultural institutions, cultural heritage, wherever it is in our societies, so to, it is to the benefit of all our citizens. And I do mean all our citizens, also the groups I referred to earlier that are not at this moment great users of institutions such as this one. So thank you for your invitation and I wish you a good conference.